In today's video, I encourage everyone to give non-metallic metals a try. Then the entirety of the cosmos is accessible to each and every individual mind connected to the great mind, the great spirit. Welcome back to the Studio Collectors. It's September and you know what that means? It's the 4th anniversary of Collective. Yay! It's definitely insane to think that 4 years ago I started this journey. And right now, I'm still here enjoying miniature painting as a hobby. So this month, we're going to celebrate our birthday by encouraging you, our viewers, to try out some of our favourite techniques. And this year, we're going to place the spotlight on non-metallic metals. So in this video, I'm going to use Sky of NMM as an example to encourage all you guys to give NMM a try. I know that non-metallic metal can be really intimidating and Sky of NMM is on a whole new level. But before you click off, I'd like to ask you to give non-metallic metal a chance and continue watching on. I assure you, this is going to be much easier than it looks. Also for this month, we are going to be running a miniature painting competition with NMM as the team. We're going to be using this handy dandy Stormcast Eternal model which you can get from any Warhammer shop or if you want, you can come down to the collective studio and redeem your very own Stormcast Eternal model. So if you're interested to join this competition, why not head on to our collective community page, links in the description below and sign up for our newsletter. That's absolutely free and you get exclusive content sent right to your email. Also, the rules for the competition will be clearly stated up on the website, so you don't want to miss that out. So enough talking about the collective community, let's move on to the concept of non-metallic metal. So before I give you guys some tips and tricks about non-metallic metal, let's begin by exploring what is non-metallic metal. So fundamentally, the concept of non-metallic metal is using just regular non-metallic metal paints to render metallic surfaces to give the viewer the impression that these surfaces are indeed made of metal. And this was started really long ago where the master painters had to use non-metallic metal paints to render metallic surfaces on their paintings. You can see right here where the masters use non-metallic metal paints such as Da Vinci when he's painting this painting right here. Also, in many Renaissance paintings, you can see how this technique is used to paint up armor, shoes, and weapons, and even furniture, all without metallic paints. Because in the past, maker particles and metallic paints were really, really scarce. So now I've shared what non-metallic metal is, we're going to move on to some basic concepts that you need to understand before starting to paint non-metallic metals. So before you begin your journey of painting non-metallic metals, you need to understand some fundamental concepts about painting. First concept being volumetric painting, where you need to be able to break your miniature up into simple geometric shapes and paint them as such. To simply put, what this means is to identify the spheres, the cylinders, the cuboids and paint them how you would paint them. So like a sphere would have a roundish highlight, whereas a cylinder would have a vertical and long highlight and shadow, so on and so forth. The second concept that you need to think about would be to understand the different types of lighting. So in most miniature painting, we have the source light, which is the main light where the miniature is illuminated from. And secondly would be the environmental light, where the miniature receives the reflected light from the environment. And this is then reflected onto the miniature in the form of diffuse lighting. And because we are painting metallic surfaces, metallic surfaces tend to be very, very reflective. And because of their reflective nature, they are very sensitive and they pick up on different sources of light. So hence, the main source light illuminating the miniature as well as the reflected light coming from the miniature's environment. So with these two basic concepts, you can see right here in the Stormcast Eternal that I've painted green, you can already render pretty eye-catching and amazing non-metallic metal results. But wait, let's take this to the next level with Sky Earth NMM, where we'll be rendering surfaces that are almost mirror-like and chrome. So now with the basics of non-metallic metal out of the way, we're going to push beyond our comfort zones by approaching this pretty complex concept of Sky of NMM. My duty today is to simplify this concept so that you can give this a try and create some eye-popping non-metallic metal effects onto your miniatures. So hopefully this explanation demystifies the challenge of painting Sky of non-metallic metal and more people can give this a try. So in essence, for Sky of NMM, we need to render 
two important elements onto any surface. For the namesake, the sky and the earth. These two elements converge together to the point where we call the horizon. So the initial step for Sky of NMM starts with us identifying which of the planes are reflecting the sky portion of the environment and which of the planes are reflecting the earth colors of the environment. Don't worry if this sounds a little bit complicated because this will be further demonstrated during the painting segment in the next chapter. The initial stages of Sky of NMM is going to look really odd. So I implore all of you guys to just trust in the process and just keep pushing ahead because the results will look really eye-catching near the finish. It's just one of those results where you just have to keep painting and painting and painting until you hit a certain threshold where the entire image comes together in a coherent effect. So without further ado, let's go on and paint up this Stormcast Eternal in Sky of NMM. So welcome to the division chapter of this video where I start to divide the sky and the earth planes of this Stormcast Eternal. As I said before, this segment is going to look very jarring and you just need to trust in the process. For this stage, I'm going to be using these colors right here. Alternatively, these colors from Games Workshop will work just fine. So let's gather up all these colors and let's start dividing which planes are sky and which planes are earth with regards to this Stormcast Eternal right now. Alright, so first and foremost, we're going to block in areas that are exposed to the sky. At this point of time, I'm going to be using a light Prussian blue. And at this stage, what we are doing is we're just sort of like geometrically highlighting the shapes. But then what's important is you are doing this pretty liberally. Anything that's upward facing, even the most remote areas, should be painted blue. Next up, we're going to be painting the earth. And I'm going to be using deep brown plus a little bit of burnt umber. What's really important at this stage is any single layer that is pointing towards the ground, you want to paint it in this color. It can be a little bit extreme, I must admit, but you will see that this will come together very, very soon. So like, I like to bring your attention towards the top of the collar where brown is applied there too. Okay, now we're going to paint in the horizon line. Going to add in a little bit of light Prussian blue, plus a little bit of dark blue grey. And this is to help sort of like desaturate the blue very slightly to give the impression that this is a sky. Similarly, for the ground, we're going to be placing in a little bit of reflected light here. And this is done using dark sea grey mixed in with a little bit of burnt umber. And I guess that's so much for the division. So now that the entire model has been divided into the sky elements and the earth elements, let's go on to render the different light sources. First off, we're going to paint up the sky elements and the sky definitely has a lot more dynamism with regards to the values in this stage. For this stage, we are going to show how the sky is lit by using these colors right here. Alternatively, these colors from Games Workshop will work just fine. Alright, so let's get up all these colors and let's get painting the sky elements on this Stormcast Eternal right now. Alright, so now with the division area done, we're going to start blocking in the sky. And what we're going to do next is to add in a little bit of pale grey, dark sea grey, light Prussian blue. And this is to emulate the horizon. At this point of time, I just want to bring to your attention, we want to do this in the connecting area between the brown and the blue. Now that that layer is done, I'm going to add in a little bit of warmer colours here. Pale grey mixed in with a little bit of pale sand and dark blue grey. And this is to create the sun that's rising from the horizon. At this point of time, this color is also used for the extreme highlights. And this can be a good starting point to think about where you're going to add in the glints. Now 
Next up, I'm going to be adding in a little bit of pale sand into the mix. And this will really push up the values even higher. So now that the sky has already been painted, we are going to move on to the earth part of it. Unfortunately, the earth part is not going to be so dynamic, it's going to look pretty boring. There are only a couple of values and they don't really jump in value that much. However, upon painting the sky, you can already see how this model is starting to look. So for this stage, I'll be using these colors right here. Alternatively, these colors will work just fine. So why don't we gather up all these colors and let's paint up the earth elements for this Stormcast Eternal right now. Alright, this earth part is going to be a little bit more basic. I'm going to be using burnt umber plus a little bit of pale sand just to sort of blend out where the sun is. And that's so much so for the ground because we don't really want to push the values for the ground to an extreme value. So now that the sky and earth is looking pretty sick, we're going to add in more effects by adding in some areas of glints. So what are these areas of glints? Glints usually are gathered around sharp areas and areas that reflect a lot of light. And because we are painting a really reflective area, these areas of focus tend to have a lot of light leaks and we want to place in this effect of light leaks so that this effect looks a lot more convincing. For this stage, I'm going to be using these few colors right here. Alternatively, these colors from Games Workshop will work just fine. So let's gather up all these colors and let's paint up some points of shine slash glints on this model right now. Now for the finishing touches, I'm going to be using pure white and I'm just going to dot the extreme edges and this is going to inform the viewer where the lights are the strongest. These are the suns, the sharp edges, stuff like that. They will really improve the look of the miniature and give it the shining effect. And this is the final result. You can see that by painting in this non-metallic metal style, you can create your very own chrome-like finish while not even painting in chrome. I hope you found this useful. So I hope this video demystifies the difficulty it takes to paint Sky of NMM or non-metallic metal as a whole. I hope all you guys give this technique a try because this is really fun and it helps you understand the model a lot better. If you're watching all the way to now, I'd like to thank you for watching this video. If you thought that I deserve it, give me a like and subscribe and consider signing up for our collective community newsletter. And also, if you want to support the channel even further, head on to our Patreon and sign up as a Patreon today. So thank you all for watching all the way to the end and I hope to see you in the next painting video. See you!